I mean, with, right. with Travis Etienne, he uh, players managers are going to be looking for any reason to kind of get excited about him. So like eight oh three is just like a dunk. When you're looking for chasing upside with guys early, you're looking on players that even if they were to get injured or if they had an off season, are going to you know could still have the ability to go up in ADP from this year to next year, or at least stay somewhat similar. Like Travis Etienne right now is usually going around that mid sixth, late sixth, early seventh kind of territory. Um, and that's right around where he was going last year. Like he was going maybe the five, six turn last year. The guy had a Liz Frank injury. It still held that value. Right. So like, that's why when I'm looking at what kind of young players to target, in these startups, it's a much different mentality than I had maybe three or four years ago when I was passing on these players I didn't quite know as well for the for some more proven veterans. Whereas players like ETN, even if something happens, he's still going to hold the value. And I like to look at that with uh, you know anyone anyone that's young like that and unproven, whether it's a running back or a wide receiver. Um, you know, like looking at this year, you know, guys like Elijah Moore or. Um, Michael Pittman or Devonta Smith, or if you're going to take any rookies, um, just looking at guys where people are looking for reasons to get excited about them and where even if something happened, their, their value is going to hold somewhat similar. It, yeah, it's exactly. a really important aspect of uh, startup drafts, that like value insulation of certain players, players like ETN, high draft capital, really good prospect coming out, uh, you know, that the big pedigree, those types of players can withstand that type of injury and still retain a large amount of value. I mean, like 2020, what we had, that was uh, Justin Jefferson, CeeDee Lamb, Jerry Judy, uh, T. Higgins. They were all kind of going in that rounds, like five to eight territory in startups. And every single one, I mean, of course, they all produce, but they all kind of held that value. And the outlier there is Jerry Judy hasn't really put up many numbers, and he's still really not still lost. There. We're two years removed from when he was this hot prospect, and people are still looking for reasons to get excited for him, as opposed to a guy like Jalen Rager, who who might have had – Rager <laughs> Rager is a guy who might have had that draft capital, but like people were looking for reasons for him to fail. Like that, I feel like that was more the consensus. So it's not just about getting people who necessarily have that draft capital or who have um, – you know who are who are just young. It is really looking about these types of players that have the insulated thing based on the market, based off you know the public perception of these guys. Like a guy like Tony, I feel like is another guy people were kind of waiting to fail. So I don't think his value is as secure as other guys from last year's draft class who got somewhat similar draft capital. You know, and like you look at all the guys who went around five to eight last year, um, Chase Smith, Waddle, Bateman. They all held Elijah Moore. They all held that value. Or increased it. Even a guy like Bateman didn't do anything. He's going at the same spot he went last year, right around round seven, eight, nine, right in that territory. So, when I am chasing the upside in setups, those are the kind of players I'm targeting. It's not just about going young or going for draft cap, but it really is about looking at the big picture around these players. And um, I have some starters right now where I just took Elijah Moore pretty early. Uh, I took Brandon Ayuk pretty early. And I personally like if I am going to take those risks on those players, trying to move out of one of my earlier picks to get an extra pick in that five to eight territory where I can take a guy like Mike Evans or, you know, DeAndre Hopkins, where I'm I'm kind of hedging against if that young player doesn't quite produce, I still have that production in my lineup. If you take all of these risk players, it is it is a little different because if it doesn't go your way or the class isn't as good as you think it is, uh, your team could be uh, in a tough situation real quick. 